Hey, good morning, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. All right, let's see here. Welcome back. If you are new, um, I do a lot of, you know, Southern simple cooking, uh, food bank hauls, um, canning and preserving on my channel. Um, however, today is Thanksgiving, so happy Thanksgiving, everyone. And um, I told y'all that I would be making a few things for Thanksgiving today. One of them being uh, baked mac and cheese, a creamy baked mac and cheese, corn casserole, and green bean casserole. So I've already started a few things. Um, let's see here. I already shredded my cheese. I have approximately four cups of shredded cheese. You can do whatever kind of cheese suits you. I just done mild cheddar um, because that's what I had. That's what I received at a food bank. So use what you have on hand. Save money. All right. Macaroni noodles. I have approximately three cups here. Um, one of these bags right here, 16 ounce, one pound. This is one of those, uh, you can get a box from Sam's Club for like $4 and it's got quite a bit in it. So I had some of that in my pantry. All right, I got water boiling. I've already got my oven preheated. Um, I'm getting ready to throw the macaroni noodles on so that they can get cooked. And while they cook, um, I'll probably go ahead and prep either the corn casserole or the green bean casserole. Cause the good thing is they all require the same temp, 350 degrees. Um, so I do have a lot going on right now, three things at one time, but I figured I'd bring y'all along for the ride. Um, if you have any questions, please uh, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below. Um, let's see if I can turn y'all here to where you'll see without dropping you. All right, there's my stove. So all I'm doing is I'm just going to boil. I already have some water on the stove and I just got some salt and a little bit of olive oil. The olive oil keeps your pasta from sticking together. It's already out of oil. And then a little trick if you don't know, take a wooden spoon and lay it across the top of your pot. It will keep it from boiling over as wood is hydrophobic. So when the bubbles start coming, it will not boil over. All right, well, while that cooks, I'm gonna turn y'all back around. And let's see here, I'm gonna get you down to where you can see. So we're gonna set the macaroni stuff to the side because we gotta wait for those noodles to cook. And let's see here, what shall we get started with? I'm going to get y'all started with a corn casserole. Now, I have never made a corn casserole before, but it is something that my husband has mentioned a couple times. So, I actually found this recipe book at the thrift, uh, not thrift store, the food bank. Because the one I go to on Saturdays has a book selection that you can get up to 10 books per household or per adult. And I like to find cookbooks. So I found this one um, and it has a simple corn casserole. I know it's turned backwards for y'all, but it's uh, one box of corn muffin mix. So I'm gonna use this Jiffy because I had it in my pantry, got it from a food bank. One can corn. Let's see here, same thing, got it from a food bank. One can cream corn. Also received this from a food bank. One cup of sour cream. I actually had to purchase that, but it's not that expensive, a dollar at Walmart. And then a half a cup of melted butter. All right, already had that on hand. So it says preheat oven to 350 degrees, already done. Mix all ingredients well and pour into greased casserole dish, bake for 45 to 60 minutes or until golden brown. So with it being 916, I'm gonna go ahead and get that in the oven. All right, cause we're supposed to be at my parents' house, hopefully by about 1130. Half a cup? 
Let's see here. I'm just trying to get my butter melted. my pan. And I'm just going to use the butter off of my measuring cup here um, to grease my pan because, you know, my hands are clean. So don't worry about that. And my family is going to be the one eating it. So it'll be okay. But my hands are clean just in case you had any concerns. All right, I'm just gonna grease this tin. And you know how I told y'all last night with those leftover uh, vanilla wafers that my husband would eat? Sure enough, they are already all gone. That entire bag. I told y'all he loved them, so nothing goes to waste. All right, so hopefully it won't stick. I've got it greased. I'm gonna go wash my hands real quick. I'm going to get these opened. to drain the whole kernel corn so I'm just going to go do that real quick all right so I got that drained all right set that here hopefully it'll all fit in this bowl all right so basically it says i'm just going to mix it all together so go ahead and dump that in there don't forget if you also follow mama bear you've heard this a time or two from her um scrape those cans there's good stuff in there all right a can of cream corn Let's see here. One cup of sour cream. Mm. How much is in here? Let's see here. I typically don't measure my stuff, but because I've never made this, um, I am going to measure. So that was a half a cup. I would say it's probably about half of this container. Yeah. So. All right. Let's see here. Get the lid on that. One egg. All right, and one of this. 
me get all of this off. going to get a fork to try to mix it since I do have a smaller bowl here but it's what I used to melt the um, butter in and I didn't really want to dirty another one even though I already have plenty of dirty dishes to work with today so and we're going to mix this up I guess until it's incorporated and like I said I have never made this before um, growing up occasionally we would have this one dish called corn pudding and it was a little bit on the thin side which was kind of icky i don't know i i personally as a kid did not care for it but this one from my understanding as you bake it it actually turns into like a thick casserole to where it doesn't run all over your plate i'm kind of hoping that is the case because then maybe it'll taste more like cornbread i don't know and I've seen variations, like I saw one that was a cheesy corn casserole that had cheese in it. Um, and the reason I added an egg, this recipe in the book does not call for an egg, but the other one I saw actually called for two eggs. And it's the one that I actually watched a video on and it held together really well. So I am going to throw an extra egg in there because I would prefer it to hold together and not run all over the plate when you cut it. All right. It's kind of weird that it doesn't call for any seasonings either. Maybe it's not supposed to. Maybe it's supposed to taste kind of like cornbread. I have no clue, but we're gonna cook it like this and see what happens. All right. Hopefully my square pan is enough. Hopefully it's big enough. It says a casserole dish. I don't know if it'll fit in here. I might have to grease the other one and have two pans of it. We'll find out. Oh yeah. We'll probably have two of these. Okay, that's fine. Now to get this greased. Let's see here. And I've already had my shower and got dressed for today, so I didn't have to worry about that. So I do have an apron on. My husband reminded me about that. So I gotta be self-conscious when I'm wiping my hands, not to wipe it on my pants. Cause typically I just wipe it on my pants and be done with it, cause I'm home. But I'm not, I gotta go out. So wash this off. All right, see ya. I um, thought I was making one small square pan. I guess if you wanted a smaller batch, you could like half the recipe. I don't know. But there we go. And like I said, my oven is already preheated. So this said 45 minutes to 60 minutes. So I'm gonna get these in there. It's already 925. I will check all of that. All right, I have a bag I hung down here for some trash. All right. All right, so now let me check the noodles over here. They're boiling. All 
right, that's perfect. Now, what you do from here, I'll turn you again, haha, <laughs> to my sink. You're going to immediately take it off of the heat, drain it, and run it under cold water to stop the cooking process. You don't want your noodles mushy, so you have to stop it. So rinse them under cold water. sit there and drain a little bit all right so let's see here we got our macaroni prepped we have our pan right here i just got to spread this grease around it's just a little bit of olive oil in this pan to keep it from sticking um going to turn y'all well actually I'm just going to move y'all all together over towards my stove because now we have to make the roux and the sauce that's going to go onto this so let's see here let me turn the light on So y'all are back. Let's see. And don't mind me. I'm just all over the place. I do have a simple recipe that I follow. Um, I don't follow it to a T. I've made my own changes to it. So like, for instance, the recipe only calls for um, two cups of shredded cheese. I use approximately four cups. Um, anytime you're using a recipe, make the changes that you find necessary. So, you may like it a certain way. Alrighty, let's see. Alright, pull all my spices over. And this recipe does call for Greek yogurt. So, another thing you can use some Greek yogurt up in. All right, where is my measuring cup? All right. Fourth cup. All right. So, and I'm just going to use the same pot that I cook the macaroni in no need to dirty another one all right so approximately a fourth a cup of butter 
you're going to get it in here so you can melt it. needles have drained well enough so I'm gonna go ahead and get them in this pan you've already you just need a simple 9 by 13 go ahead and grease it up um, so that your stuff doesn't stick uh, go ahead and have your noodles cooked cooled and just plop those in there just like that all right get a whisk I want that to melt And you're going to need milk as well because, I mean, you are making a simple roux cheese sauce homemade. So, it's delicious though. All right. One, four, four. All right. So, practically, you're just going or basically, you're just going to melt your butter, um, get it melted down. Then, you're going to put approximately a fourth of a cup of flour in here. Blend it really well. Um, let it cook a little bit to cook out that uh, flour taste. All right. Let's see here. I wonder if I can get y'all any closer so you can actually see the process. Let's see here. I don't want to drop you in. Let's see. I wonder. Let's see if I can, oh, there we go. Looky there. All right. So we're just melting this. And I'm just gonna open up some of my seasonings right here that we need. Oh yeah, because like this one's not even open. Cause I had to buy a new one, ran out. So that's melted. We're going to turn the heat up just a little. We're going to get a quarter of a cup approximately around there of just all purpose flour. And you're just going to mix it in. Mix, mix, mix. Get all mixed. Pittens, get out of my cabinets. That's just my cat. He's a terrorizer. I mean, if you feel like you need a little more um, butter, by all means. I feel like that possibly, maybe I didn't put enough in there. So we're going to let that cook just a little bit, cook some of that flour taste out of there.
one and a half. Cups of milk. And then how much of this? One and three fourths. So now, you know, you're just cooking that some so that the flour taste gets out of it. I have to say, this recipe is full of flavor. Um, I've tried a lot of different ones. All right, so now I'm going to slowly add in some milk of one and a half cups of milk. Till it's fully combined and all the lumps are gone then I'm gonna get some chicken broth in here as well because we're making the sauce um, the nice cheese sauce because this is a creamy baked mac and cheese so like I said I've tried a lot of mac and cheeses baked mac and cheese and I didn't really care for them but this one is nice and creamy it's actually really good and like I said, it has lots of flavor, so. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get some chicken broth. You're gonna need one and three-fourths cup of chicken broth. So now we're going to cook this until it gets thickened. Um, and then we're going to add in all the spices and stuff. So. y'all making for Thanksgiving? Is there any special dish that you make or that you bring to the family get together? Is there any dish that's your absolute favorite that it just wouldn't be a Thanksgiving dinner without it? Yeah, we're just going to keep whisking this um, until it thickens and then we're going to take it off of the heat once it has thickened um, and we'll add in the spices and the cheese and the Greek yogurt and then we'll get it mixed with the macaroni. So. And also a quick question for you, do you like breadcrumbs on your baked mac and cheese? I do, my husband does, but my friend at work, she actually does not. I thought that was interesting. I thought everybody liked breadcrumbs on their baked mac and cheese and other, you know, casseroles that you have a little crispy topping. She does not. She said she finds it weird. Turn my heat up a little bit <sighs> and I got my little friend he's not so little anymore sitting behind me this is one of our rescue dogs Charlie and he is what I like to call my chonkers he's a good boy 
He's everywhere with me, but he tries to kill me in the kitchen, I'm telling you. He likes to sit right behind me, so if I go to step back and I don't know he's there, I'm going to trip. Yeah, see? He's talking to me. He's spoiled. That's mommy's baby. Do y'all have any fur babies? Any cats, dogs, uh, guinea pigs, any of that? Surprisingly, I deserve Mother of the Universe Award because my youngest daughter turns 12 December the 21st. Well, for two years now, she has asked for pet albino rats. I know, right? Gross. But I finally gave in and she has two rats in her bedroom. She gets them out, she handles them, she plays with them. This is disgusting to me, but she's happy. Um, she keeps them clean. I personally, no thank you. I'll stick to like the guinea pigs, the hamsters, the cute little ones, but those tails on a rat, no thanks. That just creeps me out a little bit. that bag no sir all right see here we go all right we got some bubbles and it's thickening up on us and the bubbles are not going away so what I'm gonna do is turn the heat off pull it aside all right y'all can still see what's going on all right and check out my cute little measuring spoons they're little hearts like that says a heap of love. That's a, a tablespoon and spoonful of affection. Like they're so cute. I actually found these at a thrift store as well. So now we're gonna get our seasonings in, our cheeses. So what you're gonna need for this, for the most part is, let's see, half a teaspoon. Yeah. So a half a teaspoon of ground mustard. Um, You know, just get it in there. All right, set that to the side. A half a teaspoon of salt. All right. A half a teaspoon, one teaspoon of garlic powder. So, one, two of those. A fourth a teaspoon of paprika. Let's see here. Like I said, this one actually has lots of flavor. It's really delicious. So, a pinch of nutmeg. So just pinch it and drop it. All right, some black pepper to taste. I'm just gonna put some in there. All right, get that mixed up. See all that? Mm -hmm. All right, and then we're gonna add in our shredded cheese. You can buy the store-bought shredded cheese. I personally do not. Um, I like block cheese, so. But I mean, if I get it, like typically I get the cheese at a food bank, so I really don't have to buy cheese. Um, plus it's cheaper if you do have to buy cheese, so just buy the block cheese, shred it yourself. 
Um, now, if I mean I'm given a block of cheese or a bag of shredded cheese, you think I'm going to turn it down? No, because this mama loves her cheese. My husband does not eat dry cheese. He thinks that's gross. All right, and now I am going to fold in approximately a half a cup of Greek yogurt. All right, not much. About a half a cup. Alright. I'm not even going to measure it. Eh, that looks about right. Maybe a little more. You're just going to fold it in there and mix it really good. It just gives it a little added creamy. To, oh, excuse me. A little added creaminess. Had a burp. All right, now, let's see here. All right, and now what you're going to do is, let's see here. We are going to mix it with our macaroni that's already in the pan. You're gonna pour it over it. Try not to burn yourself. And you're gonna scrape out all that goodness. All right, set it to the side. And then you're just gonna mix this really well with all your noodles. And that's why you don't wanna overcook your noodles in the pot because your noodles are going to continue to cook when you get them into this sauce and you get them in the oven. They're gonna soak this up. They're gonna finish cooking. So you don't want to cook your noodles till they're completely done. Um, you wanna kind of, I guess, parboil them, which practically means partially cook um because they're going to finish cooking all right hold on what do we have here uh, there we go mix it really good that appears good now here's where the breadcrumbs you can sprinkle them so i actually forgot to grab mine so let me go get them out of the pantry i'll be right back And here we have homemade breadcrumbs. I don't have to buy them. Um, I get enough um, bread from the food banks that when I get some baguettes or some bread that's, you know, starting to get a little hard, I literally just, you know, bake it in the oven. And if you have a dehydrator, you can do it that way. Just remove all the moisture, then let it completely cool and grind it up and it's a mixture like it smells amazing it's a mixture of different breads so some of it has seasonings in it and you have a cheddar asiago i mean it's just a mixture of breads and you're just going to sprinkle this over it um, to give it a nice little crumb coating on top And now I'm going to throw this in the oven along with the corn casserole that's already in there. All right, and what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna move y'all over here. Um, I will be back. I'm gonna clean this up. And then when I come back, we are going to get that green bean casserole in the oven. But I want to go ahead and get some of this stuff cleaned up, some of these dishes washed, and I'll be right back. All right, everybody, and welcome back. All right, so I told y'all I would be back, and I am. So now we are going to make 
I got my kitchen cleaned up some. I got dishes washed and yeah, I couldn't take that chaos. So I've got the corn casserole, the baked mac and cheese in the oven. Made the banana pudding last night. So the last thing that I need to make is the green bean casserole. It's very simple. Um, so let's see here. Get y'all to where you can see. I have everything needed here. I got a mixing bowl, square pan. All right, two cans of cut green beans, one can of cream of mushroom soup, one cup of milk, some fried onions. And here's something to, so y'all can see. Every bit of this I received from a food bank, including this milk. So, pantry cooking, cook, use what you have on hand. Um, if I didn't have cream of mushroom, you can substitute it with a different cream of whatever soup, cream of celery. I mean, you could use cream of chicken. Might give it a little different taste, but that's nothing bad. Um, so, I'm just gonna get this, well, not that. I'm gonna get this mixed in here it doesn't typically call for seasonings other than like salt and pepper, but I think I'm going to throw some seasonings in it because why not? I personally like stuff to taste good. I like seasonings. I mean, that's what they're there for, right? To add flavor. And like Mama Baird says over on Mama Baird's Homestead, scrape that can. Yes, scrape that can. Get all of that goody out. Don't leave no food behind. You don't want to throw good food in the trash. So, scrape it out. Get it all out. Use it. Alrighty. Um, there's still a little bit more right in there. Alright, throw that away. And pour my milk in there. Alright. Let's get this mixed up and then I'm gonna go hit that spice cupboard <laughs> and find me some spices. You know, I never realized that it was actually soupy like this. Hmm. Was it supposed to be a whole cup? Yep, one cup. I guess because it thickens up as it cooks. actually eat green bean casserole but maybe if I add some spices it might taste better that's what I'm thinking but then again I normally don't make the green bean casserole it's um like last year I think my mom bought a frozen one which I mean I'm if that's what you like then okay but I personally did not like it so gonna add a little bit of stuff. I got some onion powder here. Season with love, okay? Season with love. Some garlic. I'll put a little bit of ground mustard. Not a lot, just, you know, a little bit. A little bit of, oh, I about dropped my whole container in there. A little bit of nutmeg. Doesn't take a lot. And here we have some Himalayan pink salt. If I can get it open, why is it? There we go. Add some of that in there. All right. Go throw these back. And 
a little bit of pepper, black pepper. All right, so now I'm just gonna mix that up, get those mixed up in there. Oh, thank God I got an apron on because it's so just splashed on me. All right. And mix, 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 mix. Mix, 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 mix. All right, and now I'm just gonna pour it in here. Scrape your bowl, get all your goodies out. Spread it out. And top it with those fried onions. Now I do love fried onions, I am not gonna lie. I like to get that big bag from Sam's Club. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with a good thing of fried onions. If you want a salty snack, it will definitely hit the spot. So in my opinion, I don't measure the fried onions. I put them on there with love. When I feel like there's enough on there, then I'll stop. Because if I have to be honest, that's probably my favorite part. If I do have to eat it, it's going to be the topping. I'm going to use that whole bag. Why not? Nobody ever said that's too many fried onions, did they? No. All right. So that's there. All right. I am going to throw this away. And these. And these. And put these see all right I'm gonna turn y'all let's see here there we go Ta -da. all right so what time is it 10 14 all right all of that looks amazing oh yeah turn those all right so now those just need to finish cooking all right um the corn casserole is actually looking really nice uh smelling amazing in here i wish y'all could smell it um but i'm gonna let those finish cooking and when they're done i will definitely bring you back to show you that um i want to take you out of here because i want to show you something so some of the things i got from the food bank I ended up canning, ta-da! All right, I made some raspberry jam. Um, I had enough tomatoes and some other stuff that I made a pizza sauce. This is a pineapple mango salsa. The, I have some strawberry jam. These, uh, the grapes I got the other day, I turned them into a grape jam, a green grape jam. And those cucumbers that we had that um, were slimy, I washed them off. And only two of them were bad, so I made my daughter, she loves pickles, I um, canned some pickles. And as you can see, like Mama Bear, I like to reuse my jars. And success, they seal. This is actually a baby food jar. So, and it resealed perfect. And as you can tell, I don't skim the foam off of my jelly as well. Um, I have no problem with that foam. It's, it tastes fine. So that's what those bubbles are, is that was the foam. Um, and there you have it. Everything here came from a food bank. I didn't want it to go to waste. And I knew we were going to be using a lot of Thanksgiving leftovers for the next few days. So I wanted to preserve it. All right. Well, I will bring you guys back after the food is done and show you everything we have together. All right. Have a great day. Or shall I say have a great 30 to 45 minutes and I will be back. All right, guys. Well, here is one thing that is done. Here is the corn casserole. And I have a second one here, and I already cut a tiny piece out of it. 
for my husband to try, and he, in fact, says that it is what he remembers. Um, he said he remembers it being thicker, and now I see, like, I thought that it would have overflowed one pan, but if you see here, it didn't really come all the way up. So I probably could have poured it all in this one pan and been okay, but now I know, and you saw how simple that was, so now I can make that throughout the year and let him enjoy it. All right. I'm back. All right. So here is that baked mac and cheese we made. Okay. And right towards the end, I turned the broiler on just to get a little um, brown on top. And then here is that green bean casserole. So, oh, and I got to get that banana pudding out of the fridge. So that is what I'm taking to help out with the Thanksgiving dinner. Um, again, what are you taking? What did you make? What is your favorites? Um, what do you absolutely despise and can't stand? I had one of my lovely followers let me know she does not like turkey, which is fine. I mean, there's things I don't eat. So just let me know. And I hope everyone has a wonderful Thanksgiving. All right, guys, I will see you later.